Okay guys, today we're going to be taking a look at my spring 2020 EDC gear dump. And while I've covered quite a few of these pieces of equipment in previous EDC videos, I figured it's time, because enough has changed, to do an actual, honest to goodness, gear dump or EDC update. Okay, so before we jump into this, as always guys, please don't forget to comment, like, share, and subscribe. It helps the channel out quite a bit. And of course, I always want you guys to become a part of the channel and help it grow. So if you guys can like, share, comment, subscribe, and ring that notification bell, it is super appreciated. So let's just jump right into it and talk about some of the things that you guys probably want to see in this update. So the first of them is going to be the handgun, and this is a Glock 19X, of course, in the coloration, FDE coloration, and I'm running a 19 round magazine with that, and of course, I'm running a spare 19 round magazine. So all told, I have just a couple rounds for this gun, and uh, yeah, I've talked about it more in the EDC Essentials of why I went over to a Glock 19X, or why I went over to a gun with such a high magazine capacity of, you know, 20 rounds, you know, 19 plus one in the chamber. So I won't jump into that, or I won't get into that in this video, but the handgun is the Glock 19X, and yeah. So that is the handgun. So that is the EDC handgun. So other things that have changed a bit from the last time is knives. Now I do have quite a few different knives in the rotation. This just so happens to be the Spyderco Spidey Chef. But in addition to this, I'm also running the limited edition or Blade HQ exclusive bug out in 20 CV. I'm also running the Hinder XM18 and I'm also running the Chris Reeve Knives Sabenza 21, or large Sabenza 21. So it's a handful of knives, and it's kind of a toss-up which one I'm feeling in that particular day, though I have been carrying the Spidey Chef quite a bit. I really like the weight, the size, and the form factor of the Spidey Chef, especially in the pocket, but its cutting performance is also pretty awesome. So that is what I have in my pocket today. So that's the knife, that is the handgun. Other things that I'm carrying uh, for the multi-tool, I'm still rocking the Leatherman Charge Plus in G10. Of course, this is the blacked out version, so black oxide finish, and apologies, it's a little hard to see in all of this black. I realize that even I'm wearing black, but this is the uh, Charge Plus G10 uh, by Leatherman, and, and this has just been a go-to multi-tool. I've carried the normal Charge Plus for a very long time, so I definitely like this multi-tool, and I think that the tool set that it is, or that it has on it, is very versatile and very useful for my personal life. So, so it's going to be a little bit tricky to see these next handful of little EDC bits, because they are also black, but I'm carrying a black and red Zippo, just classic lighter, of course, with a rubber band on it, or Ranger band on it, so that helps kind of work towards preserving the fuel a little bit longer. So that's the lighter. The pen is a Big Idea Designs titanium pen, and this thing has replaced my larger, big, um brass pen by Meritac, and there was nothing really wrong with that pen other than the fact that I disliked how large and heavy it was because it was a full piece of brass pen, and I also disliked the screw cap on it. I just didn't like having to, you know, deal with a screw cap, uh, trying to write stuff down. You know, I like just having a clicky pen that is just simple and easy to use. So I went over to the Big Ideas titanium pen, and once again, this is also in black, but this thing is super lightweight, super compact, and like I said, it is a clicky pen, so it is much more user-friendly than the previous pen. Next to that is, of course, the good old LD30, and uh, this little flashlight here, I've also talked about, done reviews on, and once again, continue to love the Phoenix LD30. It is a super bright flashlight that is also very compact, uses one eight. 118650, but is a very nice flashlight, and like I said, the form factor is very hard to beat with this little guy, especially because it puts out 1600 lumens, and yeah, no complaints about this, still definitely my EDC flashlight. 
So next things to move on to is the sunglasses. Of course, I do wear sunglasses year round and now that we are getting more sun in the day, uh, these get more and more important, but these are Oakley Treebly Xs and the, I primarily I primarily went over to the Treebly X's because the radar locks are just very large and they kind of look a little bit crazy when I'm not shooting. So the radar locks are what I usually wear when I shoot because they have good coverage of my eyes. They're more almost kind of like goggles, whereas these Treebly X's are more just like traditional sunglasses. So those are the sunglasses. They're nothing too crazy or fancy, just simple Oakleys that are polarized and yeah, so pretty basic there. So next to that is kind of the technology stuff. So for headphones, even though a lot of people use AirPods or AirPod Pros, I still really like Aftershocks and these are the Aftershock Airs. And uh, the, that is the kind of lightweight version of the Aftershock. And I still find that they get pretty good battery life and uh, they have a very minimalist form factor. They're nice to work out with because they clip on the outside of the ear and kind of go around you so it looks like this. And so they tend to stay pretty well glued to you, but they're lightweight and very unobtrusive all told. So I like them for EDC and I like them for working out and for just general life whatever seems to come my way, these seem to be pretty good. In addition, I've talked about it before that these are um, bone conduction, so they don't sit inside the ear, which allows your ears to be open. So if you need to hear anything uh, externally around you, uh, this allows for peripheral hearing as well. Yeah, that is the Aftershock Airs. Next to that is the watch, and this is once again in black. As you can tell, there's probably a lot of black here unintentionally, but this is the Apple uh, Series 5 watch, and I have a, a black sport band on it at the moment. I do tend to like these sport bands quite a bit because they have a little bit of give and flexibility to them as opposed to the normal silicone bands. And so that's the watch. It's a Series 5. Nothing too crazy about it. It's not a sport band. I did take the case off because I still didn't like the bulk of the case. So I'm not sure if I will end up running a case on this long term. But for now and for a while, I've been running it without a case, which means that it does get scratched up a little bit, but it's certainly still usable and just fine. So that is the watch and the band. So next to that for technology is going to be the phone. This is an Apple iPhone Pro, Apple iPhone 11 Pro Max. And I've said it in previous videos, the reason why I went with the 11 Pro Max as opposed to the 12 is primarily due to battery life and battery size. The 11 Pro Max has a much larger battery than the 12 Pro Max. And it simply just means that you get longer life and because I do a lot of things outdoors and outside, it means that I don't generally have access to a lot of chargers. And so I like having a large battery naturally so that it, my phone can last just that little bit longer without having to use or need a charge. So that is the phone. And of course it is in midnight green. It's probably kind of hard to see because this case covers it, covers most of it, but I am actually going to be changing the case for this so that hopefully I'll have a little bit more minimalistic case. But right now it is in an OtterBox Defender and it is in the Realtree Max, I think it is. Let me see, Edge, there we go, Realtree Edge. And so, uh, yeah, has a little bit of splash of camo, but yeah, so that is the current phone. So, Moving over to the last handful of things, the water bottle is still a hydro flask, either the hydro flask like a normal 32 ounce with lots of stickers on it, or I'm actually beginning to favor these Trail series uh, hydro flasks because these are a little bit lighter weight, but primarily what I like about these Trail series is they're made out of stainless steel, unlike the aluminum uh, kind of outer shell of the hydro flasks. So the aluminum outer shell on the original hydro flasks are far more prone to getting dented and dinged and just damaged. And I've dropped this one a few times on accident, but it still is completely impervious uh, to most reasonable drops. And it still is a thin metal, so you don't necessarily want to bash on it. But being that it is stainless steel, it is a lot more durable than the original hydro flasks. So for the fact that it's a $5 extra price for getting one of the trail series. I say that they're worth it because it's really not that much more to get a far more durable water bottle. 
So those are the kind of water bottles I'm going for, though I certainly do use now jeans quite a bit as well. Lastly, wrapping it up, I'm still rocking a Trayvax uh, Summit wallet, and then I have my keys. And of course, the ride has kind of changed, and I'll get into that in another video. So for the keys, I'm just running my auto start on the back, and of course, the normal Toyota key on the front. So yeah, that's basically all I have for EDC. Um, hopefully you guys have enjoyed the video, the gear dump, and kind of get to see what I'm carrying in 2021. So hopefully this video has been good. Hopefully it hasn't been too dark. <laughs> I kind of realize that a lot of this gear is black, so it's been a little bit different. But as always, guys, God bless, and I'm out.